The Render API is the system that Drupal uses in order to define content as structured arrays instead of just long complex strings, as well as the pipeline for converting that structured data into the long complex HTML strings that your browser expects. In this tutorial, we'll take a high level look at the parts of the Render API and provide a sort of 10,000 foot view of all of the pieces. The goal is to make sure that you're comfortable with the use case for the Render API and understand why it's important to learn how it works and have a better idea of all the various components and which ones you'll want to spend time learning about. So what is it? The Render API consists of two main parts, structured arrays that provide developers with a way to represent the data or content in their application and various hints about how that data should be rendered. In addition to these structured arrays, there's also the rendering pipeline the process that Drupal will go through in order to service a request, including gathering render arrays from various system components, determining what format their response should be in, handling caching and cache invalidation, and ultimately rendering a structured array into the desired output format. Anyone writing code for Drupal, whether that's for modules or themes, should take the time to understand, at least at a conceptual level, how render arrays work. Learning the complete render pipeline is less critical and is more useful for people who are actually writing new render arrays from scratch. As the old adage says, you have to know what all the rules are before you can break them. In this tutorial, we'll be focusing primarily on the render arrays piece of the puzzle, but we'll talk a little bit about the pipeline as well. The render pipeline itself is fairly complex. It makes more sense to be broken down into individual tutorials that explain each component and its use. Okay, but why? Why not have modules return a string of HTML that you can just print out to the page? Render arrays allow Drupal to defer the rendering of content to HTML for as long as possible. This gives other components in the stack the opportunity to influence how that content will ultimately be presented. So many modules can work together on the same content. It's also much easier for themes to deal with. Imagine if in your theme you wanted to print out an article note but you want to remove the image field from the main content and print it out elsewhere on the page. If this was already a complete string of HTML, you would either have to resort to regular expressions or the expensive task of recreating the complete HTML that was already created once just to remove something. PHP is much better suited for handling data structured as an array and has all sorts of built-in functionality for manipulating arrays. Structured data can, in theory, be rendered to any format not just HTML. And finally, the Render API provides some really awesome ways to encapsulate complex logic into reusable elements. Here's an example of what this all looks like. In image one, we've got a render array, or at least a subsection of one. The content in question is an image uploaded to an article node via an image field. If you look closely, you can see that the render array contains information like the ID of the file entity representing this image, the alt, the title, that was entered by the user and the image style that is configured to be used with this field. It's all an array and could, if necessary, be altered by your theme. When the render array is output by Twig, the render pipeline is automatically invoked and the HTML renderer converts this structured data into the string of HTML in image two. There's that alt tag again, which when displayed to the user ultimately looks like the image they expect to see alongside their content. With all of that in mind, I think it makes sense to take a second to establish the role that the render API plays and how that changes depending on what you're doing. Specifically, are you writing a module or creating a theme? Module developers should make sure that they always represent their content as render API arrays. They can define new element types in order to bundle up complex functionality as needed, and they can influence the rendering pipeline. Theme developers generally alter existing render API arrays in order to change the resulting HTML output. They also occasionally create new renderable structures in the context of preprocess functions. Theme developers also invoke the render pipeline by outputting renderable arrays in template files, in which case Twig will automatically start the process of converting the array into its HTML representation. Now that you know why the render API exists, here are the things we're going to cover, listed roughly in the order you're likely going to need to learn them. Render arrays, which are the core structure of the render API, are structured arrays used to define content and hints as how that content should be rendered. 
render elements are prepackaged render arrays, allowing for a sort of shorthand for describing similar types of data. Render caching, Render arrays contain data about each element in the array that allows for the complex process of rendering an array to HTML to be cached, and at the same time ensure proper cache invalidation whenever that content changes. And finally, the complete render pipeline, which is the process that Drupal goes through to convert an incoming HTTP request into a render array, and then render that array to HTML via a renderer, and finally return a response to the requesting browser. It's probably also worth pointing out that the render API plays an important role in Drupal's HTML form processing system. All forms in Drupal are created as form arrays, which are a superset of render API arrays. That is, anything a content render array can do, a form array can do too. Forms, however, also have some additional processing features that won't work for a content array. For example, you can't perform validation of elements in a content array. Knowing how the render API works is essential for anyone working with forms in Drupal. And that's the 10,000 foot overview of the Drupal render API. In this tutorial, we said that the render API exists to defer the rendering of content to HTML in order to allow easier processing during the life cycle of a request. That understanding render arrays is critical for anyone writing code for Drupal and that anyone writing modules will benefit from understanding the complete rendering pipeline. I recommend you check out the render arrays tutorial next and continue from there.